Hey, what's up YouTube, this is Diaphone. Today, I wanna to talk about panic mashing or panic DP. It's a common question I get all the time. I see it in a lot of my comments and I kinda of wanna share my perspective on it because I'm a serial panic DPer. <laughs> So let me show you what I mean. So let's look at some old gameplay footage. All right, this is Young Diaphone. This is back in 2014, back in the Street Fighter 4 days. As you can see, I, I was <laughs> way skinnier back then. Thankfully, I've gained a lot of weight. My health's a lot better. Long story, well, maybe we'll get into someday. But this is back when I was a serial master. Not very many people knew of me. I think this is my like first top 16 in winners at like a regional or a major, whatever you want to call it. So, you know, I'm coming in, I'm I'm quite nervous, right? Let's take some examples from this uh, from this match, right? All right, so you see, I, I got I got fucking mopped in the first round. This is back when like people used to give advice mid match, right? That's kind of funny. And so my adaptation was, I'm scared. I'm just gonna mash a lot. Yeah, coaching got banned. Let's not talk about that. I dropped the combo with it or whatever. Um, but let's let's look for some spot. Okay, look at this. You want to talk about panic mashing? Look at this throw. He wasn't anywhere close to me. And I did wake up button. And I did an unsafe move. I Yeah, <laughs> I do. I do unsafe move into another EX. I was, I was doing some scrubby mashing stuff. And he just kind of wins off of that. A lot of it came down to nerves. But a lot of it came down to the fact that most of the people I played against, that worked. Just mashing EX pinwheel or just random jumping. And so when I see a comment like this, so once I decided to ask on a forum specifically about the issue of panic mashing, because I, I would call what I was doing, what well, wasn't necessarily mashing in a sense, there's a little more tactical <laughs> against it. A lot of that was out of panic, right? So I want to share my perspective. Some of the common advice, right? Just calm down, which is like, okay, if it was that easy, I would have calmed down already. Like that doesn't help. Practice hour a day. Yeah, that helps. And that will get you to being able to do, do stuff like this, but eventually you'll run into panic mashing, right? There's not the best advice out there. I think the first thing in order to like better understand how to stop panic mashing you have to understand why it happens right and it's not as simple as you just get nervous <laughs> okay so let's say you're new player and you have we'll call this like your ram maybe it's like the technical term is like working memory and we'll split it into two sections right red will equal autopilot and you guys might be thinking autopilot's a bad thing it's not we'll talk about that and then we'll talk about stuff you are actively thinking about or man manual pilot i call it manual pilot so we'll color this green mental stack yeah i, I would call this whole thing the mental stack there's a brand new player to this game are they autopiloting or are they are they thinking about everything they're doing just think about it for a little bit my theory is that you have a little bit of autopilot, right? Because like they know how to use a the controller. They probably played other games before, right? And so maybe the autopilot is like, I'm just going to hit random buttons. Because like a lot of new players, they think mashing's really good. So like they're going to hit random buttons. When they hit those random buttons, that's kind of dictated by autopilot. It's not really something you think about, right? But then most of it is manual pilot. Because as a new player, you don't have any habits in green and for fighting games, right? You're thinking about everything. Maybe while mashing, that's true. But you're thinking, okay, like, what does this button do? What is this character? What are these bars at the top? What are these bars at the bottom, right? Most of it is going to be manual pilot, right? And let's say you have 10 units of RAM. So let's take a player that has, we'll call it a um, intermediate player, right? What do you think the difference between an intermediate player and a new player is? Do they autopilot more or less? Yeah, yeah, every, everyone's right. They autopilot more. That's 100% correct. Because they actually, they have the habits built in. They've played the game a bunch and they know stuff. So what goes into this autopilot section? Combos. Combos are 100% autopilot. Well, not, no, not, it's not true. Not true 100% autopilot. But there's a large component that goes into muscle memory, right? Neutral. What do I do on round start, right? You might think about it, but you have a number of set options that you're going to rotate through. What do you do when you block a jump in? Every person has their default thing to go to. Um, so We'll say defense and even offense, right? What's your go-to mix-up? Autopilot doesn't mean you're always going for the same thing, right? Autopilot means that I'm used to running my offense with Eno, so I will do JS and the JD. If they block that, then I'll go into JS throw or I'll go into JS slow, right? That's all part of the autopilot structure. That's all stuff I figured out before I even enter that match, right? Doing JS and the JD isn't something I came up with on the spot. So basically everything, but everything also has a manual pilot input, right? So like combos, neutral defense so like how combos have a manual pilot well sometimes like if you guys ever done a combo even a match and thought about like your execution this happens to me in KOF all the time 
Okay, here's the combo. You do EX grab and then you have to land this link afterwards. That link is really hard. So actually when this EX grab is happening, I'm actually thinking about the exact movement on my joystick to do. It's not quite ingrained in my muscle memory because the game's only been out for like a month and a half. And so there's some of this that actually goes in the manual pod. So instead of thinking about like what I'm gonna do on Oki, I'm thinking about making sure my execution's pristine. So the less you have down on autopilot, because my combos aren't 100% autopilot, they're mostly autopilot, I have the muscle memory down. So some of it has to go manual pilot, right? So for example, that combo. So new situations. Let's say you're playing a match and your opponent's doing something you've never seen before. Your manual pilot's gonna be figuring out what the hell do I do to this? They're blocking all your offense, right? Stuff isn't working. So let's say your stuff in neutral or defense offense isn't working. That's gonna go to manual pilot, right? And you're gonna be thinking about, hey, this guy keeps hitting me with each stroke. I don't really know how to deal with this. Let me focus on dealing with this. Let me focus on grab or let me focus on something else, right? So now that we got that out of the way, the rest of this is manual pilot, right? Let's say you feel overwhelmed on defense, right? And you don't have enough working memory to deal with that, right? Your working memory is dealing with stuff like trying to remember your combos in the middle of a match. That If that's dominating your working memory, you get on defense, you're gonna default to autopilot. And if your autopilot is mashing, then you're not gonna be able to stop mashing because you don't have enough manual pilot to physically stop mashing. So if you wanna fix this not being able to mash part, what do you have to do? You can make your autopilot more efficient you would think it would be decreasing the amount of autopilot maybe that's possible but I'll, I'll say it's like more dense right there's more packed into that autopilot and so because there's more packed into that autopilot it means you have enough working memory to focus on stuff like not mashing the other thing you could do is play worse players <laughs> It's really easy not to mash against worse players because even if your autopilot is still red, your working memory, less to think about. If there's less to think about in working memory, it's gonna be easier to stop mashing. I think the third option is the obvious, right? Get more working memory. You have to increase your RAM. You have to add more RAM to the system. How do you do this? So I, I think this is debatable, but I think stuff like healthy lifestyle, physical exercise, playing with a clear mind, etc. For example, I think there's actually a, a third hidden bar here, right? Which is, I'll call it the other crap. So it's actually the intermediate player and the beginner player, they all have this other crap. And actually it's probably more like this, right? So let's say you're not completely focused. You're thinking about something other than the game. Let's say your RAM's like truly fixed, but you have all this other crap other crap slash RAM not turned on, or, or some of it says like your, your brain's just not working efficiently. What do you guys think would cause a situation like this to happen, where you have less working memory to deal with? No sleep. My wife got it right. Okay, if you got no sleep, you're tired as hell. You're gonna play worse, right? What if you're anxious? Have you ever been in like a match and you're like, oh my God, I don't wanna lose. Or you're thinking about your next tournament match. Tournament nerves. What happens when you have tournament nerves? You're thinking about other shit. You're not in the present. So what, what else would cause less working memory? No sleep, anxious, tournament nerves. Lack of proper nutrition. Sure, yeah. Bad nutrition, unhealthy lifestyle, right? You know, for me, I get anxious. I still get tournament nerves. So dealing with that's a little harder, right? But working out, having a healthy body, having good sleep, you know, working on my mindset are all things I can do to kind of pump this up, right? Making autopilot more efficient is also a very viable option. I think that's the route most people go with, right? Because if you just play more games or understand situations better slash better flow chart, you're making your autopilot more efficient and therefore you can get away with less RAM, right? But yeah, I mean, if you, if you guys want like a secret to like, how can I have no sleep, be anxious, have a bad body, never work out, and have a negative mindset, and be one of the top best players in the world? Sorry, this is the wrong video for you because you can't do that, in my opinion. So let's get to that top player. What does their chart look like, right? It's a combination of the above, except they have more working memory, right? Right? The autopilot's efficient. They have more working memory, and you know, no top player is perfect. They still have some other crap they think about. I'm not trying to say you have to be a robot and be the alpha Chad. Will that make you better at fighting games? Yes, but it's unrealistic for a lot of people, right? So it's about taking things one step at a time and focusing on like where you can make the most impact in order to get closer to this chart. And you have a multiple different ways to go. So now that we talked about the charts, what's the summary? So if I were to give advice about how to stop panic mashing, where is your issue? Have you not put in enough time where you have no autopilot build up? Do you have autopilot build up, but you're playing people too strong that you feel like you have to mash? 
as part of making it more efficient, you can make it better, right? So by better flowchart, I mean like if your default is mashing, train yourself by playing worse players or labbing or whatever you want to call it in order to make your autopilot better. So your autopilot is not mashing or you can get better working memory or you can decrease the things that give you less working memory. In order to get closer to this bar, you're going to have more to work with, right? You're going to have more working memory. You're going to have a better mental stack in order to focus on not mashing more. So this begs the question, one last thing. Do top players mash when they shouldn't? Yes, everyone's saying yes, yes, 100%. I'll actually give you an example. I was playing a tournament. I had to play Laic, who was uh, one of the best KOF players in the country. And I actually did really well against him. I lost game one, I won game two, but my middle stack actually in the third game, it kind of got overwhelmed. Like, I, there's me dropping combos because I'm a little more nervous. I'm, I, I don't have that mental stack as I should be. Look, I'm, I just matched sweep twice in a row. <laughs> I just matched sweet choice in a row. I forgot about, yeah. I, so the point I'm trying to get at is like, it happens to me. It happens to all top players. Everyone's stack can get mentally overloaded. And when that happens, you do stupid stuff like with sweep and the, another with sweep. <laughs> we forgot one thing. I don't know what it is. What is it? It's not going to Trader Joe's. You have to play big booby characters. <laughs> Yeah, you have to play big booby characters. That's not my list. All right, get off the fucking YouTube video. <laughs> Let me know if this is helpful. This is probably like the most theoretical video I've ever put out. But fighting games are a thing that I think about a lot. And I, I like to share these kind of like different concepts because I think looking at a problem from a different perspective can sometimes give you the answer that you're looking for, right? And, I, you know, honestly, I think this like applies to almost anything in life too. You know, let's say you're giving a speech at work. What's the best way to not stutter, for example? Same idea. Make your autopilot more efficient or uh, give a speech to people that it doesn't impact you. <laughs> it's the same for everything, right? Does this make sense to you guys? Does this not? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you want to see more content like this, especially more spreadsheets, <laughs> please consider like, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a great day, and I'll see you next time.